Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Fresh Oil family. Wonderful to see all of you today. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. Please uh, help us with the stream by giving it a thumbs up. Help us start the stream strong for the glory of God. Amen. And if you can, share it on your social media. Amen. Praise God. Give you glory, Jesus. We honor your presence. Enter into his presence with praise. We worship you, Lord. We're so very thankful. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We praise your holy name. 
we thank you for the sweetness of your spirit that is already here. And we know, Lord, that you minister to those who minister to you. And you speak with those who speak to you. We reverence your holy name. We worship and magnify your very presence. We love you, Lord. We're here for you and no one else. Take us to the secret place. is the man that fears the Lord. Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. 
and his descendants, he himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear you. The friendship of the Lord is with those who revere you. Revere his name. Give him reverence. of the Most High. We abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You are my refuge. You are my fortress. My God in Him, You alone will I trust. We choose to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We worship your eternal holy presence. We honor you.
holy, worthy, spotless, true, we worship you, Lord. Friendship is reserved for those who honor your name. May your name be honored. Bring us to the intimate presence of the Father. This is the secret place. The intimate presence of the Father. Jesus, you came from the intimate bosom of the Father. We 
We thank you, Lord, that through you, you bring us to your very near presence. By your blood, through your precious blood, we draw near. As we draw near to you, you draw near to us. Friendship is reserved for those who honor your name. We honor you.
we honor your presence. All of my dreams Oh, I gladly lay before you Would you take them out them As much as you If your presence doesn't go, then I will never leave here. I don't want us to part. I must have you. I must. Exodus 33, 14. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except that you go with us? We thank you for the gift of your presence.
the intimate presence of God. We thank you, Lord. All we have is you. All we desire is you. All I have is you. All we want is you. Listen to what Moses says. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. The people are separated through his presence. Look what Moses says. See, he understood the presence of the Lord. What makes you holy to himself is his presence. Look what Moses equates the presence of God to us. He says, so we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are on the face of the earth. His presence purposes his holiness in you. What set us 
apart from all the people of the earth. It's not our works or how holy we are. It's his very presence. His holy presence. What does his presence do? My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Rest for your soul. Jesus says the same, come to me. All who are weary, come to me and I will give you rest. given through the grace of God. It's His grace. Verse 17, So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken for this purpose, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. Grace and truth come through Christ. Law was given through Moses, but grace came through Jesus. Presence is given because of His grace. see the glory of God in your life? You want to see the presence of Christ rest on you? It's found by grace. Grace. is only found in Jesus. Only Jesus. I'm reminded of that scripture where it says that 
the Lord told Moses, no man can see my face and live. He says, but stand here and I will pass my goodness by you, by the rock. You will see my goodness. That rock is Jesus of Nazareth. The rock of our salvation, the cornerstone of our faith. says, I will make my goodness pass over you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. And it shall be that when my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Friends, I tell you that that rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. We are hidden in Christ, in God, to behold His eternal glory. That rock of ages. that place where is that place by me it is Christ Jesus blessings prophet Listen to this. The angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you know what these are? This is Zechariah oh, chapter 4, verse 5. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, 
nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And then he says, Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone. And a capstone is made out of a rock with shouts of grace, grace to it. The foundation of our faith is the capstone. It is the cornerstone. It is the heavenly rock from heaven. It is the Lord Jesus. John 1 16 and of his fullness we have all received grace for grace for the law was given through Moses but grace shouts of grace and truth came through the rock came through Jesus Christ no one has seen God in any time not even Moses saw his face the only begotten son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. In the light of the new covenant now, we can stand by the place of the rock of ages and behold the eternal glorious face of God. excellencies of your glory we worship you we see you as Shot we are in your wings. this is the secret place covering of your presence hide me in the secret place with you said to him, Lord, show us the Father, 
and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Jesus, Colossians 1.15, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for by Him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. He is the image of the invisible God. Moses said, show me your face, and you responded with your son. Teach me your ways Lead me in your truth Second Corinthians 4, 6 Look what this says. It says, For God who commanded light to shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give light and the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Teach me the fear of the Lord. Teach me.
gracious to me. Guard my soul and deliver me. Don't let me be ashamed, for I take refuge in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me. Holy, holy. Receive the strength of the Spirit. Receive His strength right now. Receive his ministry, ministry of grace, mercy, wholeness. You that are watching, receive that strength. His glory is here. His sweet glory. The glory that is found in the face of Christ. He says, I am strengthening you with my perfect strength. Because you come to the fountain of living water, His presence is like bread. And if you sit down, he will multiply the strength that only his presence can give.
His holy you up in strength.
that I have loved I weep and wash your feet oh God that I Oh, how we love you. Your presence is true nourishment for our spirit. Oh, how we worship you. Oh, we love you, Lord. We give you glory. You are our covering. You're the canopy of divine glory. You shelter us in the secret place of your presence. We abide under the shadow of your mighty hand. Oh, how we worship you. How we love your holy name. We lay our lives down before you. In your presence we live. In your presence we are revived. We come to life in your presence.
this is what grace looks like for you are a holy people to the Lord your God your God has chosen you to be a people for himself a special treasure above all the peoples of the face of the earth the Lord did not set his love on you nor chose you because you were more in number than any other people for you were the least of all peoples but because the Lord loves you and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers the Lord has brought you out of a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh the king of Egypt therefore know that the Lord your God he is God the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. That's what grace looks like. not because you're strong or mighty or strong in number it's because he loves you he has chosen you and he calls you a special treasure he does not love you nor choose you because you are someone that is deserving of it none of us are he did it because he loves us. Because he keeps his promises. because he says for you are a holy people to the Lord your God this is Deuteronomy chapter 7 listen 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 to what he's saying he says for you are a holy people to the Lord your God you are separate for him it is for him it's not for other lovers other people it's for him you are holy to him you are separate unto him the Lord has chosen you to be a people for himself and I love it because he just doesn't say one person he says a people he's looking for a people it's not just about me myself and I but it's about us a people A special treasure is what he calls us. It means that he esteems us as precious. He esteems us as valuable. He did not set his love on you, nor chose you because you were more in number than all the other people. In other words, he did not choose you or love you because you were someone or something mighty or great he says no for you were the least of all peoples the first will be last the last will be first he chooses us and loves us by his grace not through the merit of our own works He chooses us because he loves us because he's love 
and because he kept his oath. He kept his promise. He swore to your fathers. He's speaking to the children of Israel here, but I see a beautiful tapestry of Christ and the Father. You see, he's good to us and he loves us because of the promise he made toward Messiah Jesus. He made an oath with Christ. And because of Christ, We are now his people. He brought us out with a mighty hand and redeemed us from the house of bondage. We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dearly beloved son in the light. We are no longer under the hands of Pharaoh. We are no longer under the house of bondage. This must be believed. You must believe this truth. Otherwise, you will think yourself to be in bondage and be incarcerated in the slavery of your mindset. You have been redeemed by the blood from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh as a typology of the devil. Therefore, know that the Lord your God is personal. He is God. He's faithful who keeps his covenant. He keeps his promise. He made the covenant with Jesus and he keeps mercy for a thousand generations. His mercy dissolves any generational curse that you may think you may have because his word says he keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations for those who love him and keep his commandments. Who is the one that loved him and kept his commandment perfectly the Lord Jesus Christ any man in Christ is a new creation old things have passed away the curse has been broken because he became a curse for you and he keeps mercy for a thousand generations the generation of Jesus Christ the generation of Christ you and I are part of the generation of Christ. We are the spiritual offspring of that atoning work of the cross of Christ. He keeps his mercy for a thousand generations. Praise God. Well, if you can, please don't miss future videos. Subscribe. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel just yet, hit the bell button. Many of you are saying, hey, I'm noticing that you're live and I don't get notified. It's because you're not hitting the bell button. You've got to hit all notifications. Sometimes for whatever strange reason, YouTube will set your uh, the notification. It'll turn it off accidentally. Or... Um, It'll just default it to um, some notifications. So if you can, make sure that you hit the bell button, but don't stop there. Hit all notifications. Amen? Amen. Well, today, what a wonderful time in His presence. What a beautiful moment in the presence of God. You can have this every single day it's a wonderful thing you don't have to wait for just a stream or just a special event the moment you set your eyes on the lord there begins 
the sweet exchange of his divine presence in your life. So do me a favor. Make sure, let's start the stream strong. Hit the bell button. Yeah, a lot of people are saying, yeah, I stopped getting them. Yeah, hit uh, and also hit the um the like button. I'm not looking for likes just for the sake of likes. I'm not looking for subscribers for the sake of subscribers. I'm looking to beat the system, the algorithm of YouTube. <laughs> Amen. Shout out to Jen Cruz. She gave me this awesome uh, oil lamp back there. You see that? It's an oil lamp. And it you put real oil in it and you light the flame there and the the because of the oil um you can light that flame for months at a time. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> so shout out to her and also check out her YouTube channel as well subscribe to her. She's uh our assistant here at Father's Glory and She's a friend and pure sister of the Lord. Okay, today we are going to talk about, let me just talk about this oil lamp real quick because it just really ministered to me because I, I actually used it this morning in prayer when, when it was dark out and it was so beautiful just to look at it and the Lord was using that to teach me, to show me some things. I thought of the scripture where it says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. I literally had that lamp on my feet. And um, as it was gliz glimmering through the darkness in my shed, it was beautiful. And I also thought of that scripture where it says that the spirit of the Lord is the, the, the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord searching all the most inner parts. How? Because the lamp gives light, but without the oil, there is no light. The flame of the fire is only sustained by the oil. And I was just meditating on that beautiful reality today as I was worshiping and waiting before the presence of the Lord, just in my quiet time, in my intimate time with Jesus. And I was just kind of sitting there and, and I thought this, wow, candles and bright flames burn quickly. They burn out fast. But those old oil lamps, man, they last for a long time. And I looked at that flame and I've seen different flames. I've seen candle flames. I've seen, you know, torch flames. But what I've noticed about the oil lamp, the oil canteen, the, 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 the whatever it is, the oil lantern, what's so beautiful about it is that that flame is so consistent. It almost looks like a filament of light. It's constant. It's consistent because of the oil. And I'm telling you, man, I feel the anointing. I'm telling you that if you are focused on the ministry of the presence of God. If your aim is not a platform, but his presence, if your aim is not an adrenaline rush, but the oil, if your aim is not the platform, but the private place, there will be oil that comes from God's intimate touch that sustains you Fires come and fires go, but the flame will sustain you because of the oil. We are oil lamps. We are vessels that contain the oil of his presence. The oil produces consistency. When you are in the presence of God and you make the presence of God your aim, you make your fellowship with God your priority, there will be such a consistency.
But if you are in your soul, you're going to be up and down. <laughs> up and down. There's a difference between a soulish relationship and a spiritual relationship. There's a difference. A soulish relationship with God is only a circumstantial relationship with God. What do I mean by that? A soulish relationship with God, a relationship that is just based upon your feeling or your belief about the lack thereof will only produce circ a circumstantial relationship. That means that your relationship will only be strong when you feel good. But when 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 the times get rough and the and the waves begin to roar, you recede because it's circumstantial, it's fleeting, it's it's soulish. God does not want a soulish relationship. He wants a spiritual relationship. And a spiritual relationship is based upon faith and grace. A spiritual relationship is led by the spirit, not the soul. The soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. The spiritual is, is sparked by faith and the word of God. Believing and cleaving to him is the spiritual connection that he gives you. Many times we get discouraged. We become bored. We become exasperated. We become exhausted because we are incorrectly communing in prayer through soulish means through circumstantial means. And we, the moment we say, well, I don't feel like praying, we don't pray. Or, oh, I feel good today. I think I'm going to pray. You see, that's, 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 a, that's a relationship that is built upon soul, just the soulish man, just your feelings. But if you built upon your fellowship with God with faith. You come to him believing that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What you will realize is that your soul will become enlivened through his spirit. See, the soul is always wanting to feel. The spirit is wanting to connect in faith. Once your spirit connects in faith, your soul will connect to his spirit. Your spirit and your soul will join in cadence with the Holy Spirit. The soul is not the soul is part of the man. God made our soul. He made our mind. He he made our will. He made our emotions. But we 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 try to touch God through soulish means. And we walk away with a soulish response. This is why it breeds instability. But if you neglect yourself, deny yourself and cleave to Christ, believing that he is, regardless of how you feel, as you wait and rest in his presence, your soul will become enlivened and your soul will sense the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You see, man approaches God through, through it's backwards the way we approach God so many times. If I don't feel it, then I don't approach it. You see, we, we go backwards. We go, we go body and soul, and then hopefully we get some spiritual connection. If my body doesn't feel it, if my soul is not in it, then it's, then, then, you know, 
then I'm not spiritual. See, that's wrong. We've got to go the original way, spirit, soul, and body. We've got to become spiritually minded. We've got to be, you know, we got to approach it this way. It doesn't matter if I feel, it doesn't matter if my soul desires or not. I am going to spend time because my spirit is willing, though my flesh is weak. The spiritual man, the spiritual woman is not led by their soul or their bodies. They are led by the truth of God's word. And so many times I tell you that I wake up and I don't feel like spending time with God. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel, but I always remind myself, your word says that my spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So I believe that truth. And I act as though I believe that reality. And I go into the secret place. I go into my prayer time and I am not motivated by my feeling or the lack thereof. And it is not a moment. It is just a moment. I lay my life down at that, at that moment. I lay my feelings, my heart, and I just sit and worship by faith. And I begin to notice that the awareness of God's presence becomes palpable, becomes knowable, because I am approaching and I am pressing through the veil of my own feeling, the veil of my own body. I am pressing through to touch the Spirit in faith, and therefore I receive. My Spirit connects with his spirit and when my spirit is connected with his spirit all of the sudden my mind my will and my emotions become calibrated by the spirit my mind my will and my emotions now are being dominated by the spirit then there is this awareness of the presence of Christ. And then there can be moments where your body even senses the glory of God. But we are so often led carnally, bodily. We try to approach God in bodily ways. We've must, we must approach Him in faith. And as you touch him in faith, you receive that which you lay hold of through faith and are made whole. Like the woman with the issue of blood who touched the hem of the garment of Christ by faith. And when you touch him through faith, through the door of faith, your soul trust me, will be in line with the Spirit. And there will be moments even where your body will sense a glory on you. But many believers go backwards. If I don't feel it, it's not there. If my body doesn't, no, 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 no. We are spirit soul, body. And the scripture says, they that are joined to the Lord are one spirit with the Lord. So that means that your spirit is knit together with God's spirit. You just need to cultivate that relationship. The door to the presence of the Lord is faith in the Lord. See, we are led by faith, not by sight. But I always say this, once you are led by faith and you understand that you're not led by faith, but you're not led uh, by sight, but by faith, once you understand that, and you enter 
by faith, you will see spiritual sight. You will have spiritual sight. You see what I'm saying? We are led not by sight, but by faith. But once faith comes, we see. Faith does not need to see. But once faith comes, faith begins to see. Do you understand? We want to see, we want to see, we want to see, we want to see. And Jesus says, only believe, only believe, only believe, only believe. And as we believe, we see. It's like the story of the road of Emmaus. The man, the men that were in the road called Emmaus, after the resurrection, Jesus disfigured himself, made himself not knowable to some of the disciples. And the disciples were talking back and forth and this strange man comes and it was the Lord Jesus, but they could not perceive the Lord Jesus. I want to show you this beautiful mystery. And they're walking by the road of Emmaus and Jesus, you know, he has a sense of humor. <laughs> he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and he's walking with them. They have no idea it's Jesus because they don't have eyes to see him. Listen to the spirit of which I'm saying this. And, and they say to the man, don't, are you a stranger? Don't you know what happened? And they talk about Jesus of Nazareth. And then Jesus turns around and says to them, Oh, you are you don't don't you understand the scripture? And the Bible says that Jesus opened up the scriptures to them and walked with them. Why did he do that? He just why didn't he go, here I am, see me for who I am? He's no, the, the, the scripture says that he opened up the scriptures to the disciples and he walked with them through the road. And then they said these words, stay with us a little while. And so Jesus stood with them. And the Bible says that as he broke bread, they saw him for who he was. And when they saw it was Jesus, he vanished in front of them. That is the life of the Spirit. So many times we want God to appear to us, but He leads us through the path of the Scriptures, opens up the Scriptures by the Spirit so that our hearts would burn on the inside of us to crave, to bring about a yearning to stay with Him. And through the breaking of fellowship, with Jesus through the word and through prayer we see him as he is that is what the life of faith looks like faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ you want to grow in your faith grow in your word you want to grow in the in in, in your faith walk come to the word let Jesus by the Spirit unveil the scriptures to you. Let him take you to the journey called faith. And you will crave him and say, stay with me a while. And he will stay and he will abide with you in that breaking of bread, those moments of fellowship. You would begin to see him as he is. Bread is so symbolic because bread on one hand symbolizes fellowship relationship on the other hand bread symbolizes the word for man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god but the third thing that bread also symbolizes is the presence of almighty god because in the holy place in the temple the priests right before the holies of holies there was this bread that was consecrated it was called the bread of his presence or the bread of his face. 
That is to say that if you want the presence of God, you must consume the word. You must consume his face. You must consume fellowshipping. You want the presence? Consume the word. Consume relationship and consume his face. You will be able to see and go into the holy place. You see, it's a beautiful reality of the truth. What is the secret place? What is it? Look at what it says here. This is how to go deep into the secret place. You want to go deep into the secret place? You got to know that. Look at this. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You want to abide under the shadow of the Almighty? This word dwell means to sit down, <laughs> to remain. It means to be inhabited. It is literally translated as Mary, to remain, to sit. It can mean a seat, a stone, dust, ground, humiliation, the token of humiliation, to sit down the doorway, an assembly. You see, what is, what is this word meaning? What is God trying to say? That to dwell in the presence of God means to sit. It means to be in his presence from a posture of humility. It means to marry he who sits down who remains who inhabits he who marries he who sits on the stone in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty now what is the secret place this word secret it means a hiding place a covering, a protection, a secrecy, to cover. It's a secret matter. The bread of utter secrecy. It's beautiful. What is he saying here? To dwell in the secret place is to sit. It is to remain in a state of humility, it means to stay under the covering, under the secrecy of the Most High. Why do you think when Jesus, when Jesus says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to stand in the street corners. They love to blow the trumpet. They love to say many things because they think they'll be heard by God. But when you pray, he says, go into your room, shut the door and pray to your father who sees in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you in the open. The secret is in the secret. You want to grow in a strong cultivation of the presence of God in your life. The secret is in the secret. Being in the secret. Shutting yourself away. Being alone. Being with Him where no one sees you. Being with Him. Many people do things for the applause. Many people do things for the movements of the crowds. But the secret of Jesus' ministry was he bypassed all that. He moved his Father's heart. He dwelled in the secret place. It is hidden. 
You want to know why we are to be in the hidden place and the secret place? Because he himself is in, is in hiddenness. He himself. We are hidden in Christ in God. Reminds me of the passage of scripture in Mark chapter 1, where the Bible says that Jesus woke up very early to pray long before the day arose. And the disciples were looking for him. And Peter was looking all over for him. You know where Peter found Jesus? In the place of prayer. In the secret place. I believe that's a beautiful typology of what the disciple of Christ should look like today. You look and seek him and you will find him in the secret place and in secret places. Isn't that a beautiful reality? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, now watch this, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Here's where we don't understand about the abiding life. This is something that we need to recover. The reality is this. The reality is this. To abide means to be in consistent fellowship. When, when someone abides somewhere, for example, I abide in my house. You An abode and abiding is a, a, a place of residency. This word abide means to leave overnight, to spend the night, to stay overnight, to stay, to dwell, to lodge. Let me tell you something. Lodging and dwelling is a byproduct of dwelling with God. Let, let me explain what I mean by this. You want to abide? Then you've got to be in the secret place. And when you dwell in the secret place, you will abide because you will find yourself consistently in his presence and you will see him as your daily bread. You will find yourself not being able to survive a day without being with the Lord. Some of you have a hard time in your fellowship with God where you fellowship with God once a week, maybe on a Sunday or three times a week, maybe on a stream. And you wonder why it's hard for you to get consistent. Listen, because consistency does not come from you. The consistency comes when, when you make the, the Lord your dwelling place, you will see him as a necessity. When you spend time with God, you will begin to realize that you cannot go an ounce without him. And it creates in you this abiding fruit. And you will find yourself in a state of dependency for him. I say this out of my own experience. I know what it's like to pray once a week. I live that way. I know what it's like to spend time with God every once in a while. I know what it's like to feel like your heart is a bag of sand and you feel spiritually dry. I lived that way for almost 10 years. I know what that's like. But let me tell you why I live that way. Because I did not value his presence. I thought I did. But the moment I began to spend time with the Father, the more the Father showed me that without him, I can do nothing and only the Spirit can do that. You will, you will 
go through, you will go through a, a time of praying once in a while to living a life of prayer because you will see the secret place as your home. You see, God doesn't want a visitation from you. We pray, God, visit us. We want a visitation. We want an encounter. Praise God for those things. I've had many encounters and visitations. But you know what God desires more than that? Habitation. There is a difference between visiting the Lord and inhabiting His presence. And many believers visit the Lord. They just visit Him every once in a while and they wonder why they're struggling. God wants so much more than just a visit from you. He wants a, you to dwell with Him. He wants you to inhabit Him. He wants you to make His presence your home. Does that make sense? What happens is the person, the man, the woman who dwells in the secret place, who lodges in the secret place, who makes the secret place their home, they will find themselves abiding under the shadow of the Almighty because the Almighty casts that shadow of refreshing. And you will constantly crave to go to him because there is a provision of refreshing just as a shadow casts a shadow just as an object casts a shadow over the hot summer day so those who yearn after the spirit they come to the tree of life and are refreshed by the coolness of his divine presence You must prioritize the secret place. The secret to the secret place is the place in secret. Going to God in secret. going to him I will say of the Lord he's my refuge my fortress my God in him I trust again what is a refuge and a fortress but a place that you see as protection as a place that you see as refuge those who dwell in the secret place begin to abide in the shadow of the Almighty because they see Him as a refuge. They see Him as a fortress. They see Him as a divine necessity. That's right. Bethany says, it's like going on occasional dates versus being married. We must be married to Him. Do you want to dive deeper into the secret place? Then you must dwell in the secret place. You must make the decision and yield yourself to Him. Many people are waiting for an experience to draw them to God, not realizing and failing to see that the blood of Jesus Christ has already given you access. Now your response is to draw near in faith. It doesn't say that God is wooing you to dwell there. He says, he who dwells, you must choose him. You must draw near first and you will find yourself abiding. 
you must you must decide to dwell with him and i'm telling you when you make that step he takes all of the other steps after you will find yourself abiding you will find yourself staying you will find yourself desiring the lord and yearning after him you will find yourself in a place of fruitfulness again I'll tell you another secret here you can be as close to God as you want to it's up to you why he's already provided all the grace he's already shed his blood he's already given you his spirit he's already given you his word now it is up to you to decide how much you want him you can get as close to God as you desire to. He has already made everything available to you. He has already given you great and, gr and precious promises that through these, you may be able to partake in his divine nature. What do I do? How do I start? You start by spending time. Number one, you must make your decision to spend time with God. Number two, you must realize that you are to connect with Him not because you feel it or not feel it, but because of faith. And number three, you will find yourself dwelling there. Listen, I know what it's like. There is nothing worse than a believer who becomes prayerless and knows better. Because you know better. And what ends up happening is that in the back of your head, you know that God is drawing near but your it becomes hard for you because you've yielded to your flesh for so long the more you yield your flesh the more the more you're giving it voice and power the more you disregard your flesh and you draw near to him the more his voice and power come into your life. It's only hard because you believe it's hard. That's why it's hard because you be because you're believing that it is. And I know that might be a painful truth. But sometimes the truth hurts and the truth cuts, but it's to bring healing to you. The scripture tells you, it says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. You want God to draw near to you, but you haven't drawn near to him. You see what I'm saying? You must draw near to him first. Why? Why do you draw near to him first? because he has already done it all. He has already provided his son. He has already atoned for your sins. He has already given you his spirit. He has already given you his word. 
He's already endowed you with his presence. Now you must believe that and draw near. And then he will draw near to you. Some of you have drawn near and you feel as if you're tired because you don't sense the drawing of him. Draw near. Draw near. You see, when the, the recessions of waves, when waves in an ocean recede back, it is only to draw you deeper. The greater the receding, the stronger the wave. So do not grow weary. The spirit is the same when the wave is and when the waves recede. He is working in you and for you to accomplish his good will and pleasure in your life. So the spirit is still the spirit when you when you feel it or not, when you feel the awareness or not. Draw near in faith. They that go to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Seek him. The seeking is essential. Why would God do that? I never forget one day. It happened like it was yesterday. I was in my old church. And we had a prayer meeting. And I remember one of the pastors, she was laying hands on people and she was uh, praying in tongues. And I'm telling you, I heard it as clear as day as if it was a known language to me. And I heard her say, I choose to hide myself so that you can find me. Why would he do that? Why would there be seasons of hiding and seasons of finding? Why would there be moments of seeking and finding? Because we grow from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And God is so awesome and so holy that he, he knows that human beings take him for granted as familiar. And what he will do is he will hide himself so that you can come deeper into his bosom to find a, a newness that he wants to give you. He's not hiding himself because he's trying to withhold his presence from you. Why would he withhold the very thing that makes you holy? What he's doing you, what he's doing is drawing you closer. He says, come close, come closer, closer, come closer. See, in the seeking, what falls off like meat to a bone in an oven is the flesh. And during times of seeking, there may be times where you feel apparently you're not feeling or getting anything out of it. But what you are failing to see is that in those moments, he is stripping the flesh and something is occurring in the spirit. But you must come closer. I used to go to God just to get an encounter from God. I used to go to God just to feel something from him. I used to go to God just to get something. And when I had that position in my heart, I always hit a brick wall. You want to know why? Because I was staring at his hands and not beholding his face. And in the secret place, 
you must behold his face. Because if you are too distracted by trying to get a touch, you will miss the hands that hold you. You miss him. But the moment, see, the Lord taught me this the hard way. <laughs> the moment I started making the aim of my heart to know the Lord, the awareness of the Spirit of the Lord grew stronger and stronger. I will respond to questions at the end. The moment my heart went from, I want a touch, I want a vision, I want an encounter, to, Lord, I want to know you, it's like the floodgates opened. Why? Because that's the posture that he desires. That's what he longs for. Fellowship. The presence of God is the face of God. The other thing is this. The secret place is only found in Christ. It's like Moses, show me your glory if I have found grace in your sight. Show me your glory. He says, no man can see my face and live, but there is a place by me and you can stand on that rock and I will pass by and my goodness shall be seen. That right there is the way to know the Lord. You stand upon the Word made flesh. You stand upon Christ. There is a place in the glory of the Father that is Christ. And in Christ there is grace and favor. Amen? It's been good to be in His presence, right? When your heart is set on desiring to know Him, you will see him for who he is. You will see him for who he is. And when you see the secret place as your necessity, you will find yourself abiding. The word for presence is not found in the Old Testament because the word presence is literally translated as face. The presence of God is the face of the Lord. It is his holy attention towards you as you give all of your attention towards him. God says, Seek my face, seek my presence. And then he says, your presence do I seek. God wants your presence. God wants your face. Amen. So I pray that this word was able to be an encouragement to you. If you have a question, do me a favor. 
and put a cue in front of it. We'll have we'll we'll respond to some questions, but make sure make sure it's related to this brief encouragement. Amen. So if you have a question, go ahead and put it in the comment section right there. Also, please, please, please don't forget, don't miss future videos. Subscribe, hit the bell button, hit all notifications. Let's respond to some questions. Also in the description of the stream, I have some scriptures for you that you can meditate on that have to do with the secret place. I know it's not much of a in-depth teaching. It's just more of an encouragement by the spirit. Okay. Marlene says, any advice on how to start and not letting the feeling discourage me? Yes, the advice is just start. Just take the step. The, 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 the advice to begin is to simply begin. We make it harder than what it is. Just be. Be with him. Draw near. Read his word. Spend time. Just enjoy the moment with him. Don't be caught up in trying to feel or not feel. Be caught up in trying to know him. Okay, let's see. Linda says, this is so good and exactly what the Lord has been revealing to me. Thank you so much, Chris, for your obedience. Praise God. What is your advice for spending quality time with Jesus and his presence when your time is limited? Here's the reality. Yes, our times are limited. Um... It's, it's more, it's, it's not about the quantity of time, but the quality of time. And so what I would encourage you is number one, find a time of day where you are most quiet. For me, it's the morning time, early morning time, because everybody's asleep. I just woke up. I'm the most quiet. Sometimes it's late at night. Everyone is asleep. I'm the most quiet. And an advice for spending some quality time is shut yourself away. Try to get to a place where you're in solitude. If your mind is racing, put some uh, gentle instrumental music that'll force your mind to kind of think on the Lord and just sit there. Just sit there. Don't worry about what you need to pray for. Don't worry about what you need to do. Just be in the moment with God. That is a really great way for you to start. That means you, you're you there. Many times what I'll do is I'll sit there. There's a there's this beautiful window that, that when I walk in and it's like I just get real quiet. As soon as distract, distracted thoughts come in, I begin to open my mouth and I begin to magnify the Lord. Then I get quiet again. See, what happens is we're so distracted many times. I go through it many times. But the more you practice being focused with him, the easier it becomes and the quality increases and it becomes more enriching. Sometimes I just sit quietly without speaking. That does that does count too, right? 
sometimes I don't have any words. Can I tell you the truth, Jasmine? Nine times out of ten, when I'm alone with the Lord, I don't even talk. See, words are only necessary when led. Prayer is more than just words. It is connection. Some of the deepest moments you will have in a relationship with someone are beyond words. And the Spirit of God is beyond words. The Spirit yearns deeply with our spirit and compares spiritual things with spiritual. Most of the time I don't speak, but that's me. Don't put God in a box and don't be for it. Don't, well, if, if Pastor Chris doesn't talk, then therefore I can't talk. Don't, don't do that. Don't compare yourself. You spend time in the way that you know how, and God is big enough to lead you. Um, why do I always cry when I come to the presence of God? That's a great thing. He's just cleansing you. He's, he's, he's cleansing you and showing you his goodness and sensitizing you in his presence. Wendy says, this is a good question. How do you deal with the challenge of a busy schedule and small space to really dwell in the secret place? Here's what I would do. If you have a really busy schedule, I have a really crazy busy schedule myself. You've got to schedule the presence in. Schedule. There's nothing wrong with that. Every day, schedule this time. This is the time that I have. Schedule it in and just be with him. It's, it's as simple as that. Okay, how do I get back in God's presence after sinning and running away from God for so long? This is a mindset issue. The reality is you are always in his presence. He never leaves you. What's going on is that your conscience and your sin is creating in you this, this, um, this barrier. And so what you need to do is simply repent. Have you repented of your sin? Just repent and just be with him. That's all you need to do. The blood of Jesus has already drawn you close to him. Just be with him. It is a mindset issue. How do I focus in or just seek to dwell in his presence when I still struggle with anxiety? Like, how do you seek just to spend time with him without asking him for healing? I hope that makes sense. When you are in his presence, you're in the presence of the healer. So what I would tell you is this. Again, God knows what you have and need. God knows what you need before you ask him. There's nothing wrong with asking him. If you feel led to, like today, this morning in prayer, I begin to ask God for things that I needed after some time and being just in stillness with him. And so if you're struggling with anxiety, all that all you need to do really is to, it, it says, be anxious for nothing. Cast your care before the Lord. And so what's keeping you in a state of anxiety is when you go to God, just cast it before him. God, just give him your struggle and just begin to worship. Give him, cast your care, leave your care at the floor and just begin to worship. Begin to magnify him over your anxiety and he will still your soul. Okay, this is a good question. Does it matter what time you get into his presence? No. Where is the spirit leading you? For me, it's early morning. He told me a long time ago, the mornings belong to me. That is my obedience to him. There, are, there have been seasons where I spend time in the afternoon or spend time late at night. So it doesn't matter the time. His, his presence is always with us. What about music? Again, it's a matter of what works for you. Some people, music really helps them get calm be at peace. Sometimes music helps them think on him. Other people, they like the silence. For me, it works both ways. I like being in the silence 
And sometimes I like putting on some worship music because my brain is thinking about so many things. So it doesn't matter. What matters is your posture to know him. Also, this is good. Uh, Carol says, I found that praying in tongues before helps a lot too. Absolutely. Praying in tongues helps a lot. Why? Because you're praying out of your spirit, not your mind. I have some teachings on praying in tongues. Look it up on the channel. Praying in tongues helps you clear the clutter of your thoughts. Uh, what does dwelling in the secret place include? It can include so many things. It can include prayer, worship, singing, being quiet, reading the word. It can include because you are spending time with him. The secret place is him. Praise God. Okay. All right, my friends. It is now. It is now that time for me to get going. Partners who have donated monthly to the ministry, you should have received an email already concerning our monthly partner Zoom meeting that's taking place this Friday. What's our monthly partner ministry Zoom meeting? All it is is for those who have donated monthly to the ministry, my wife and I like to do Zoom calls just to see your faces and say thank you and just to let you know the inner workings of the ministry and what you're sowing into. And it's just a way of building um, just a bridge of thanks. If you want to become a partner, you can. You can simply text GLORY to the number 801801. All of your proceeds goes into the ministry of Father's Glory, and it helps us with this media ministry. It helps us do events. It helps us in missions. And so we desperately need your monthly partnership. Would you pray about becoming a partner? Your monthly partnership goes a very long way. And I cannot express my thanks to those who have sown monthly into the ministry. You're sowing into good ground. And it's not just because of me. It's, it's because this is the work of the Lord. Amen. Like, share, subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell button. Hit all notifications so that every time we go live, you'll be the first to be notified. If you want to mail your donation, you can mail it at Father's Glory International P.O. Box 3465. You can even send us letters there as well or testimonies. You can send it there as well. P.O. Box 3465, Greenwood, Arkansas, 72936. Veronica, thanks for partnering with us. She says, I must testify that God will provide when you decide. We had someone uh, reach out to us. I don't want to call, I don't want to bring out their name because I don't know if they want to be recognized or not. But this person has been sowing monthly into the ministry. And she, she told me that um, by the grace of God, she, uh, her family was able to receive a substantial raise. Uh, that's, that's, that's what happens when you sow. You sow, you reap. It's awesome. Also, um, maybe Jen, if you can do me a favor, um, I'm going to Houston, Texas, July 14th and 15th. Um, the Eventbrite link, if you can find the Eventbrite link and I will let me see if I can find the Eventbrite link. Let me see if I can find it. Check out. Let me see if I can find the Eventbrite link. 
I want to, if you're in the Houston area, check out the Fresh Glory Conference with um, myself and my dear brother in Jesus, Jackie Baker. Let me see if I can find... I'm going to put it on here. If you're in the Houston area, I got invited to a special conference. Check us out. I'm going to hold on a second here. There it is. sure that's it yeah it's called the fresh glory conference it's hosted by iglesia vida nueva a friend of ours pastor uh vidal leon from iglesia vida nueva in the houston area um so check check it out you know register at that and then also in no in in november time um we are hosting our very first fresh oil outpouring event and that takes place in November amen um, and so um, but the one in Houston takes place July the 14th and 15th so check us out amen all right my friends I will see you Friday and for the partners Check out your email. And for those who wish to partner, pray about it. Please consider it. We really need partnerships. We cannot do it without you. We can't travel without you. We can't support missions without you. We cannot be a blessing without you. And so we uh, so appreciate you. All right. All righty. It is time for me to go. Love you all. And we will see you Friday in Jesus name. <laughs>